Hey, welcome to Church Online, Element Church. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad that you're viewing with us today. Hey, Jesus is alive. And I know what you're thinking right now, like, Wade, wasn't that last week, you know, Easter? But let me tell you something. Shouldn't we be starting every day with that phrase that Jesus is alive? And truly, the resurrection changes everything. But today, what I want to focus on is, are we going to allow it to change us? Because even though Jesus being alive changes everything, we still have this decision to make. Will we allow his life to change our life? Will we allow the resurrection of our God make a difference in our lives? One of the guys that I follow, his name is uh, Alex Wilson, and he said this about Easter. He said, Easter is scary. It's scary because it changes everything. And Easter challenges humans and changes history. It challenges humans and changes history. And that couldn't be more true for today. I'm standing on a bridge and I'm here to tell you right now that the resurrection, what it did, if it did anything, what it did, what it, is it created a way for us to get to God. Much like this bridge creates a way to get to the other side, Jesus being alive gives us access to the Father. I want to revisit a passage after the resurrection where Jesus encounters two men who are traveling on the road to Emmaus. And as they are traveling, they're talking to one another about all the things that have happened. And this passage is in Luke 24, 13 through 35. I want you to grab a Bible, grab an iPhone, grab a device, and just look at this passage with me. It said that very day, two of them were going to the village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing them. Hey, listen to me real quick before we go on. I want you to know that Jesus is drawing near to you today, that he is drawing near to me and he is drawing near to you. That because he is alive, he is able to draw near to us. And it says in Psalm 145, verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Listen, do you want God to draw near to you? Because he is able, because he is alive. Amen. So he is drawing near to us, and because he's alive, he has that power to do that. Let's continue to read. And as he said to them, he said, Jesus said, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. And then one of them named Cleophas answered him and said, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? And he said to him, what things? Hey, isn't that amazing? Jesus is walking with them. They have no idea who he is because Jesus has made it hard for himself to be recognized. And Jesus is playing along in the scenario going, hey, what are you talking about? And they're looking at Jesus going, are you serious you got to be the only guy alive right now that doesn't know what was happening let's continue to read and he said to him concerning Jesus of Nazareth a man who was a prophet mighty indeed and in word before God and all the people and how our chief priest and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucify him but we had hoped everybody say we had hoped we had hoped to listen to this we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel yes and besides all this it is now the third day since these things have happened. And moreover, some of the women uh, of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Let me stop right there again. While they were upset, Jesus is drawing near and Jesus is in the midst of them. I'm here to tell you right now that in a moment where there's hopelessness in your life, Jesus still draws near. Your hopelessness doesn't scare him. Let me tell you something. Your anger and your frustration doesn't scare him. Because he's alive, he has the power to draw near to us. He has the power still like this bridge to connect us to God the Father. So regardless of what's going on in your life, and I know this week some things got shook up in our city and in our county and in our state, and maybe there was some new hopelessness that arose, but let me tell you something, Jesus is alive. And even in the midst of their hopelessness, as they're sharing to a stranger, they think, but they're sharing with Jesus, Jesus is still there. Their hope had been crushed because they had thought Jesus was going to do something miraculous, but they didn't realize that he was there. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get so swamped by my hopelessness and my anxiety that I forget that I'm standing on a bridge that leads me to the Father. 
that I've put my trust and my hope in a, in a man named Jesus and a God, a Savior and a Messiah that can get me to the other side of my hope and despair. These men are in that right now. They can't even see through the hopelessness who they are talking to. It continues. They begin to continue their conversation with Jesus. Some of those who were with us, they said, went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, Jesus tells them, O foolish ones and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going and he acted, Jesus acted <laughs> as if he was gonna go further. And they urged him strongly saying, stay with us for it's towards the evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table, listen, when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, come on, and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And guess what happened, y'all? Their eyes were open and they recognized him. Their eyes were open and they recognized him. Did you hear what happened? Jesus pretending to go further. They asked him, said, oh, no, 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 come with us. And what does Jesus do? He goes with them. Again, Jesus is drawing near to us because he is alive. A dead God cannot draw near to people, but a living God can. And wherever you are at in this, in this frustration that you may be facing, or maybe you're just in a place where you just feel hopeless. Maybe you've never experienced Jesus as the bridge to God and you're feeling hopeless, I'm here to tell you that he draws near to us. And when we ask him, come on, when we ask him to come with us, when we beg him and invite him to our lives and, and to our rhythms, he comes. He comes to us. And isn't it amazing that when he goes in and he sits at the table, he takes the one thing, the one thing that he knows that these guys, it's going to awaken them. He takes the bread that symbolized his body and he broke it. And it says right then their eyes were opened. They saw him. They saw him. They remembered the broken body of Christ, their Savior. And this is so cool. It concludes. And they, their eyes opened and they recognized him. And guess what happened? And he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn with us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? And they rose at the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 and those who were with them gathering together saying, the Lord has risen. He has appeared to Simon. And they told of what had happened on the road how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Jesus opened up the scripture and taught them the things concerning himself. And sometimes we need to be reminded in these moments of turmoil when we're frustrated and when things aren't going our way, we need to be reminded about what the Bible says about our King. And that's why we gotta have our faces planted in the word of God. And we gotta be reminded that he's good. Even when things don't look good, he is good. And just as the wind is blowing, and though we can't see it, but we can see the effects of what it's doing all around. Let me tell you something, God is at work and we may not see him physically, but we can tell by the things that he is changing in our lives. I'm here to tell you, Element Church, be encouraged because we serve a God of hope. And, and the only reason we can serve a God of hope is because he is a God who is alive. Look at the person next to you. Just say it out loud to yourself. Wherever you are, my God is alive. Jesus is alive. And we need to hear that today. We need to hear that every day because, because he's alive. That is why we are here. That's why we celebrate. That's why we worship. I want to conclude with this. I want to encourage you to let the resurrection not only change everything, but let it change you. Not only let it challenge everyone else, but let it challenge you. Let it change the way you live. Some of us right now, you're listening and you have not surrendered your life to God. You have not believed in the resurrection. Or maybe you believe that he is alive, but you are keeping him at a distance. Some of us are still at the tomb and we're looking in and we're trying to rationalize everything about this risen king instead of putting our faith in him. 
Let the resurrection change us. Put your faith and your hope into a living God and don't allow fear to forfeit your faith. Some of the greatest hardships the church has ever faced in history has turned out to be in her benefit and we've seen great move of God out of it. I love you guys. I want to tell you right now, if you don't get anything out of this whole message, I want you to hear this because Jesus is alive. He has created a bridge of hope and healing, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. And it leads right to the Father. It leads right to the Father. I love you guys. I hope you're having a great day. And I hope that you will put your trust and faith in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And now let's do something together that we have not done in a while. Let's do something together that we've all missed. Let's sit at the table with Jesus. Let's break bread together. Let's have communion together. And just like the disciples' eyes were open, let our eyes be open and our hearts reminded that we serve a risen King who loves us. Amen? Let's take communion together.